Welcome everyone, thanks for joining. It is Andrew here for Apple Insider. Now that Dropbox is finally going public and launching their IPO, we thought it'd be a great time to compare Dropbox versus iCloud Drive. Both of these cloud platforms do extremely well, but Dropbox, the company that everyone seems to want to kill, has a lot of competition. Apple has really beefed up iCloud Drive, and it's now more than just a way to store files. There are a ton of really nice features that you can take advantage of, and it may put it ahead of Dropbox. So let's dive in and take a look at Dropbox, iCloud Drive, see where they stand today, and which one you should be going with. Dropbox is by far the more open platform. It has more integrations with professional third-party services like Office 365, and they have a really stellar web interface. They have clients for both Mac and PC that allow you to sync any folders that you'd like up to the cloud. They offer a lot of collaboration options, including commenting on files. So if we were to drag and drop my script right here into Dropbox Online, I can view that document right here inside of the, the cloud, and I can comment on it, especially if I'm sharing with others. We can all share our comments back and forth as we work together. Sharing files is really easy with Dropbox, whether you're inside of the web interface or locally on your machine. You can enter an email address or a person to share to, or you can go ahead and create a custom link. Dropbox also has the advantage of depending on whether you're not on the basic or professional versions of setting expiring links that can just automatically shut down after a certain amount of time or even password protect them so only those with a password have access. Dropbox comes with 30 days of file recovery, so if you would ever delete something on accident, you can get it back within 30 days. If you upgrade to the professional version, you have 120 days to recover that file. There's also a really neat feature called File Request, where you can have anyone upload something to your Dropbox, whether or not they have a Dropbox account. As we mentioned, Dropbox also has a professional and even a business level. So depending on where you are, you have a lot more options here with Dropbox than you do with iCloud Drive. Dropbox Pro is especially cool. There's a lot of really neat features, including Smart Sync, where you can have all of your documents available, but only certain ones can go up and down between the cloud. Much more granular control over file permissions, who can see and can't see each document. The Showcase, so you can showcase all the different work you have, that extended 120 day of file recovery, and even priority chat support. So if you do have any issues, it's really easy to get assistance in getting that straightened out. Dropbox doesn't just have support for major operating system, it also has support for pretty much every mobile operating system as well, including iPhone, iPad, and Android. You can pretty much do everything here in mobile that you can do on your desktop and even in the web. You can view all your documents, you can share your documents, you can download documents, create documents, edit documents, create folders, apply tags, even annotate here on PDFs. The mobile app is a little bit boring, it's a lot of white space, but it does get the job done. It can be a little bit confusing just because things seem to appear in multiple locations, but it is essentially a file browser that allows you to go through, find everything, and if you're not loving the actual Dropbox app itself, you can actually open up Dropbox file inside of the iOS files application, and you can do almost as many things there as you can inside of Dropbox. Dropbox also can back up all of your photos automatically and even has a document scanner so you can scan in things like receipts and save them right into your Dropbox account. One last really unique thing about Dropbox is Dropbox Paper, which is another application meant for collaboration. It makes it really easy to work together with other people on sharing your documents and providing insight and working together in this environment. You can manage all your documents, receive notifications when someone else makes an update to a file. Just a really nice experience and something that's really unique to Dropbox over iCloud Drive. Speaking of iCloud Drive, even though it's been around since 2014, it really didn't get super powerful until iOS 11 and macOS High Sierra. Apple has baked in a ton of new features that makes it more akin to Dropbox than it ever has been in the past. On your computer, it can automatically sync both your desktop and your documents folder right into iCloud Drive. So anything you have on either of those are available on all your other computers and your mobile devices. You also can't forget about the iCloud Drive folder, where not only can you create your own folders and work with them, but other applications can save their documents here as well. There are a lot of applications that work on multiple platforms, whether it's something like ScanBot, where you can scan a document right on your phone and have it appear here on your Mac, whether it's just press record, which again, you can just record something on your mobile device, your Apple Watch, it'll save to iCloud Drive and appear here, or you can record it here on your Mac and it'll show up on iOS. Affinity Photo is another shining example. Affinity Photo exists in both locations and they can save all their photos together into iCloud Drive and just have them accessible in both spots. In the same file format, works really easily. You can also see what is and isn't downloaded to your computer by the little cloud icon. 
tap on the cloud icon, wait just a second for that file to download, and here it is. So it also saves a lot of space on your computer by offloading seldom used files to the cloud instead of saving them for local use on your drive. iCloud Drive is also now capable of sharing files. Of course, you could share them any way you could in the past, but now you can right click and go down to add people and actually share a link to those files instead. You can choose any of the pre-done options, send in a message in Twitter, Facebook, airdrop the file, all of those are pretty common. But what is really new is the option for that copy link. You have a few different options on sharing that, whether you're just adding a person to it, or if you want to have a little bit more variability, like you just want to create a link to share somewhere else, and you want only people who have the link, or you want people to be able to view, but not edit any of those files. You can't pass or protect those files, and you also can't set them to expire like you can with Dropbox, but it's a good first step into the sharing of files within iCloud. One of the big perks to iCloud Drive is the tight integration with the OS. It's not just some application you have to put in after the fact. It's really tightly integrated, including the fact that you can see how much storage you have left right inside of system preferences. You can see all your different options. You can see things that are being stored in iCloud. You can see right on the top that there's iCloud Drive. You can jump into the options and make specific changes there. And even your photo library is automatically backed up without having to do anything superfluous to make it happen. Apple has also been drastically improving the web interface for quite some time. It used to be pretty shallow, but now it's actually quite powerful. Dropbox still has a little bit of an edge here, but it is looking a lot better than it has in the past. You can see all of your files and folders that you could see on your iPhone, iPad, and Mac right here inside of the iCloud Drive web app. You can open up files, you can edit them, especially if you're working with something like a Pages document, Numbers document, or a Keynote document. All of those are supported here in the web app as well, meaning you're really easy to work with those documents and any collaboration you want to do with those using the iWork collaboration tools. There's basic support for editing those files, including changing the name, but it's still lacking some things like tags and other things that we actually see inside of the native OSs instead of in the web app. This new improved web interface was extremely important to iCloud Drive because it really makes you being able to edit this and work from anywhere. If you're jumping onto a shared computer or borrowing something else to get into your files, there was no real way to do it you know, historically with iCloud Drive. So the updated web interface definitely makes it a whole lot easier to work with those files that you've automatically saved across different platforms. As we mentioned earlier, iCloud Drive does allow you to recover files that have been deleted within 30 days. If we jump into the actual settings or the options here inside of the web application and scroll to the bottom under advanced, there is restore files. This opens up a little pop-up window where you can restore files, contacts, calendars, or even bookmarks. So here are any files that I've deleted that were stored in iCloud and it'll tell me how long before those files are permanently deleted. If I'd like any of them back, they were deleted on accident, I can just select them and hit restore and it'll put them right back where they were on my machine. Another huge enhancement for iCloud Drive that came recently with iOS 11 was the new Files app on mobile, both on iPhone as well as iPad. And it is extremely powerful, especially for a mobile files application just like this. I can search through all my files, I can add tags, I can edit, I can download, I can save files for offline viewing, and that's pretty much anything, whether it's a photo that I edited in Affinity Photo, a PDF, a video recording, audio recording, all that is available here inside the Files application. Because it was developed by Apple, it also takes advantage of a lot of the latest Apple technologies, including things like split screen and drag and drop. It actually makes working with files pretty darn simple. I can select multiple files at once, I can hold them, jump to a different folder, I can share multiple files at once, whether it's throwing them into an email, another application, and you can even see along the top, you can actually edit tags and other system information like that here. So it makes it really easy to color code these and those same color codings will show up on your Mac, your iPhone, your iPad, wherever those files are going to end up. Now files doesn't work with just iCloud Drive. What's really kind of cool is it works with other cloud platforms as well. You can see here we have the recent stuff, which is nice, but under browse, you can see locations. So I can use FTP clients like Transmit. I can use Amazon Drive, Dropbox, Box, OneDrive, a bunch of different services. So you can see if I jump into Dropbox, I have my personal account here. I can view my documents that we were just looking at in Dropbox, but all doing it here inside of files instead of having to use the Dropbox native application. The tight OS integration continues on iOS just like it did on Mac OS. Inside of settings, I can see all my iCloud Drive storage. I can view all of the different things that are in my iCloud Drive and what's taking up the most space. I'm starting to run out of storage. It's really easy to see what is bogging all that down. Like Affinity Photo taking up three and a half gigs, really need to clean that out if I'm starting to lose space. 
You can also downgrade or upgrade your storage at any time if you need to. So you can see I'm on the two terabyte plan, but I can choose the five, ter the five gig, 50 gig, or 200 gig if I needed to drop down and need a little bit less storage. One super useful feature of iCloud Drive is you don't have to pay per user. You can actually turn on family sharing, and then you can share your storage as well as your music and other information with your family members. So I have one person here on my family plan. I can share that storage with her. So she doesn't have to pay the $3 a month for her 200 gigs of storage. I can just share my two terabytes of storage with her, and we both can take advantage of it. Another big plus is the tight integration with apps. There's a few of them that are really solid, like Affinity Photo, Just Press Record, and ScanBot. I love Just Press Record on how they use iCloud Drive. They pretty much exclusively store there. So whenever I make a recording, it is immediately saved right there into iCloud Drive and available on all my devices, whether I'm making the recording on my Apple Watch, my iPhone, my iPad, or even using Just Press Record on my Mac. Now, while all the features are great, the biggest differentiator for some people may just be price. If we start looking first at Dropbox, they have two one terabyte plans, which is their plus and their professional. Then there's their standard, which has two terabytes and their advanced, which is unlimited storage. Their one terabyte is $10 a month. Their professional with that one terabyte is $20, 15 for their two terabytes and 25 for their unlimited in their advanced column. You can see professional has a lot of those cool features like showcase, smart sync, and their full text search. They also have that larger 120 days of recovery. So if you ever delete a file, you have four full months to recover those files. If we look at iCloud, there's still that free plan, but now you have 50 gigs as the lowest one, which is only 99 cents. 200 gigs is 299 and two terabytes is 999. So to summarize, if you're using this for a business or using PCs, then Dropbox is probably the better option. If you're looking for the most amount of storage, like unlimited, Dropbox is definitely the answer. However, if you're looking for the cheapest option or you want to have some sort of family sharing, iCloud Drive is definitely your go-to. Also, if you're using this for more personal use, and as long as you have all Apple devices, iCloud Drive is now a fantastic option. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.